We are in Orlando, Florida at the Top Speed Golf Academy, their indoor filming studio for their online academy. I'm here with the co-founder, Clay Ballard. Clay, give us something you're excited about with today's episode. I got a lot of great things. One thing is I want to show people I hit it a lot farther, even if they're stiff as a board and over 40 years old. Clay's got a lot of great info to share with us that really helped our golf game. Check it out on this episode of Swing Expedition. Today, I'm in Orlando, Florida at the indoor facility of Top Speed Golf, where I'm joined by its co-founder, Clay Ballard. Clay is a golfer and an instructor, but most of all, he considers himself a student and teacher of biomechanics. He has spent countless hours researching golf swings from some of the top players in the world to find the keys to great ball striking. He uses the keys that he has found to teach players of all skill levels, primarily through Top Speed Golf's channel on YouTube. Their YouTube channel has over 500,000 subscribers and some of the videos posted have had as many as 5 million views. Clay, you do some awesome coaching, both online and in person. What are some of the, the key things that you're looking at when you're helping a golfer? Yeah, I think, you know, the fundamentals that almost everybody's taught, so grip, posture, alignment, they just don't matter much, to be honest, because I, I can take a really bad grip. So this is a normal, quote unquote, normal grip, V to the right shoulder. I can make this super strong. I can have terrible posture and bad alignment, and I can still hit a pretty decent shot. So it's not gonna be my best shot. It's not the way I swing the golf club, so it may be a little bit off, but I can still hit one pretty good, even with all these bad, you know, quote unquote, fundamentals. Right, we were talking earlier, like you get a guy who does have a perfect swing, say like an, you know, an aesthetically, very nice from like an Adam Scott. Yeah. And he could mess around, take the club out or whatever, and he's still gonna flush it, even though he's doing something that's very different than what is baseline that is aesthetic in a sense, but still great golf, you know, get around and still play pretty good golf. Yeah, exactly. So all these things that we're told to spend a bunch of time on perfecting, to me, it's kind of a waste of time. It's not that they don't matter, or that they don't matter at all, it's that they just don't matter a lot. Yeah. But there are, in my opinion, five things that all the top pros do that you have to do. If you don't do those, it's gonna be almost impossible to play golf. So. What I did is I studied hundreds of hours of pro footage. I took really good video footage of the best players of all time, 50 major winners, and I started to find the patterns of what are the handful of things that you absolutely have to do. If you don't do these right, you're not gonna play very well. Mm -hmm. And that's what I call real fundamentals of the top speed golf system. That's, that's what I teach people. Okay, well, what are they? Give us a little Yeah, preview. so the, we'll probably go over three today. The, there are five pieces. Um, the first one would be my spine angle. So I need to be a little bit tilted away from the target, especially when I come into contact. So every good player has their spine behind the golf ball, or if you think of my nose being behind the golf ball when I hit it, it doesn't matter. Every single PGA Tour player, there's nobody that slides in front of it like this when they're hitting a driver. Mm -hmm. uh, another one would be lag, making sure that I get a good angle of lag in the downswing, and then I do what I call the straight line release, which is release out in front. And then I have one that's called the compression line, making sure that we get kind of behind that lead ankle and then the power turn, which is making a really good turn coming back and through. And if you can, like I said, if you can do those five things, you're gonna play good. If you're not doing those five things, you know, good luck to you. What is a tech that you trust in your own teaching? Yeah, so one of the things we use a lot is this little black device here called a PRGR Black, and it's a swing speed radar. And what it does, you put it a few feet behind the golf ball where you're swinging. When you swing with your driver or any club you're hitting, it tells you exactly how many miles an hour you swung. It tells you how fast the, the ball speed was for that shot. It gives you an estimation of about what that should carry you, considering you launched it and spun it at a good rate, right? Okay. So, so this is a big thing we like to use, and, and it doesn't matter if you use this one, really just get something that will tell you your swing speed, so as you're doing the drills, you can see, okay, I'm going up five miles an hour, 10 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour faster, and that way you can tell if the drills are working or not. I see, awesome, very cool. Anything that gives you great feedback for whatever you're working on is a really good tool. Yeah, feedback's king. On When you're doing speed training, you gotta have feedback. Clay. Take us through some of these fundamentals. Let's let's maybe start with one and go pretty deep into it. Absolutely, one of them would be lag. And what I did is I studied these major winners and I found that the average that the major winner had, this is a great place to measure it, is when your left arm is parallel with the ground in the downswing. So I'm making my swing, 
I'm starting my downswing. My left arm is parallel with the ground here. If I take this angle between my club shaft and my arm, then that needs to be a 65 degree angle or somewhere in that ballpark. You know, a lot of players that I see, a lot of times they'll start to stand up and cast, and when their left arm's parallel with the ground, the club's already way out here, mm -hmm. you burn up all your speed. You know, it's almost impossible to hit a good shot from there. So I found that that's a great position to move through, but if you can get what I call the power position right, then all this kind of ties itself in together. So I walk players through a series of drills. You can do this, I like to do it with a kind of a middle iron, six iron to eight iron, somewhere around in there. I got a six iron here. And what I'll do is I'll make a little downswing and I'll pause what's called last parallel. So last parallel means my club shaft is parallel with the ground in the downswing. And here I want to hit a couple key checkpoints. If I can have my hands in front of my right leg, then that's going to ensure that I have a ton of lag late in the swing. And if mm -hmm. I can do this, it's basically impossible to cast from there. Right? I can't do this and then get down to this position. Right. It's just going to happen naturally. Yeah. Now, I also want to have my hands a little bit lower. Like I said, a lot of people that cast is actually a byproduct of standing up. So what they'll do is they'll raise up out of their posture. All of a sudden, I'm standing up really tall. Well, I can't reach the golf ball if I have lag. I have to throw the club out to reach the golf ball. So I want to feel like those players get their hands nice and low. If I'm looking at my knee, I want to be you know, four, five, six inches up above my knee. That's the first position to get in there. I've gone ahead and feel like I've started my downswing, my hips are opening up, that's all great. We all know how to do that. The second position here, if I had a club on the ground or a stick on the ground, an alignment stick, I'll just grab one here. So if I have something lined up toward my target, I wanna have this club inside of that line. So let's say this is my, my target line there, or roughly where my target line is. Instead of having my club parallel with that target line, what I've found all good players do is they have this club shaft a little bit inside of that. I see. And that ties in with staying in your posture, shallowing it out. You have to have that club a little bit inside at this mm -hmm. point of the swing. And then finally, kind of the, the last piece, if you don't do this right, just forget about lag, it's not gonna work, is you have to square up the face the way the pros are doing it. Yeah. So if you have the face wide open, and I'm kind of doing this, yeah, logo of the gloves up toward the sky, this face is so open, I'm gonna block it out. You better watch out standing there for yeah, exactly. like that. Right? Yeah. It's gonna go a mile. You may right. hit one ball like that, and then you're like, no more. I'm yeah, not, yeah. not losing any more balls in the right house. So a lot of times players will get rid of that lag to try to get to the club face to square back up again. So that's kind of the, the piece that ties it all in together. I'm gonna get my hands low, my club inside, and then from there, I'm gonna turn this club face down, almost like I'm twisting a doorknob with my, my wrist, or I wanna feel like my logo of my glove goes down to the ground. If you look at the club face while that's happening, that club face is turning down to the turf like that. Yep. Now, if I can feel that position a few times, then when I make a swing, I'm just trying to move through that position as I hit a golf ball. Mm. So you wanna give it a whirl? Yeah, yeah, I would love uh, to, yeah. So let's jump up here. Sure. The first piece again is I'm not so worried about the start of the downswing, because if you get this bottom piece right, that's gonna get everything in together. Yep. Exactly, so notice how your hands are nice and low here. Yep. If you were to stand up out of your posture, go ahead and stand up yep. too tall, the hands raise up, right? right. You gotta flip it, so yeah. stay low. If I'm looking at the club shaft here, I don't want it to be, I never want it to be there. Most people think that's in line, that's that's outside, mm -hmm. gonna be toast from there. I wanna get this thing a little bit in, and then from there, from there, if you kept your hands on it, I'm just gonna twist these down. And I'll even have players Go ahead and give me about five or six reps, twisting that down, just turning the club like this so you can feel that motion. Yep. That's a motion that almost nobody I work with has. Yep. Definitely the right. back of my left hand facing the ground. How yeah. feeling? And now from there, if you struggle drawing it, a lot of players come over the top, struggle to draw, you just let that go ahead and release. I almost feel like that club keeps on moving out this way, like we talked about, a little bit inside out. That's not exactly what's gonna happen, but that's a good feeling for players that just struggle to hit the draw, you know? Yeah. And if I'm trying to hit a draw, and let's say we're setting this, this alignment stick up, mm -hmm. angle to the right, at this last parallel, I still want the club a little inside of this, right? Uh, yeah, it could be. I mean, this is all a little bit exaggerated, yeah. but I find, I love that position you're in right there. That thing is awesome because you really can't get it too far inside for most players that are over the top and steep. Would you actually pump one? Like, do yeah, I do a few of these where you, you just kind of feel that position. Yeah. And then I make a couple practice swings feeling like you're moving through that position just in a kind of a normal practice swing, kind of full back swing, full through. Yeah, really all exaggerated right. there. Now go ahead and finish your swing from there gotcha. just so you get a feel of how that all kind of ties together. Yeah, exactly like that. Just go ahead and do a full swing now. Okay. Try to move through that position we just worked on. There we go. Oh, Start to the, the right. right. Want to get a little bit of a draw. I saw a little bit of curve here. Yeah. Going a little right to left. But yeah, so for Let's players like that, you probably have a very straight ball flight. Always Typically. hit it really good. Yeah. I'd love to see somebody that struggles with a slice 
just sling that thing. I mean, I want it coming out here and hooking 40, 50 yards. Right, we're gonna try this again. So yeah. I just gotta turn, I, gotta, I need a little bit more of the face part, I would imagine. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Because that club pouch yeah, do one more, and then I'll give you one more filling. There you go. That one you start to see Drew a little bit more. Got it. And, and the last piece I'll pair with that, if, if you're still having trouble drawing it, would be go to that power position again, okay. just kind of in the last parallel in the downswing, and then I'll pair that up with a good release filling to get it to really turn on over if you're struggling to draw it. Okay. So from here, I want you to feel like from there, you're gonna go ahead and release on out like that. But mm -hmm. instead of having the face up, this is gonna be crazy for you because you already hit it good, but I want the face turned down like that. Yeah. So again, you're keeping a lot of that roll. And this, for you, being a good player and already being able to hit a draw when you want to, yeah. that feels like that thing's gonna go six miles to the left. But for the guy that's over the top slicing, yeah. that's the perfect feeling for him. Okay, we'll give it another go. We'll try that feeling. There we go. And you see there, that ball is really turning over. Yeah. I'd like to see a player just hit quite a few like that, and then you can tone it down. Sure. Have it be a little bit straighter then, not quite as much of the bow of the wrist. Club path 10 degrees out to the right. It's yeah, that's a little, a little, little exaggerated, much, but, right? But it's great. Like you said, it's an over-exaggeration <laughs> if someone's fighting a slice. Yeah, absolutely. That, that, that exit feel with the face down was nice. It really got this to feel like it would turn down to the ground and then keep going in that direction. Yeah, and that ties in with one of the other things I'm gonna talk about later, which is straight line release. Great, so when we come back, we'll get a little bit deeper into this release, like you're saying, the straight line release, which is a through the ball post impact feel. Awesome stuff. Just keep building on these fundamentals that you think are actually the true fundamentals of what someone's gonna need to do to play better golf. Absolutely. What do you think is next in golf instruction? Well, one of the big goals we have is to get people as much speed as possible. I mentioned the 20 minute distance fix in this program. And one of our goals is to get 20,000 people to gain 20 yards or more over the next 10 years. Okay. So the cool thing about this is we're looking for players that are over 40 years old, that don't want to lift a single weight, they don't want to do any crazy exercises or buy any crazy equipment. You know, I think that the game is going to more distance, and I've seen regular players, recreational golfers, can gain 20 or 30 yards in just a few weeks, and I think that once it starts to catch on, that that's going to take off, because everybody you know, loves hitting it farther. It just makes the game a lot easier. Yeah, awesome. Cool. That's, it sounds like an exciting project. Yeah, it's going to be really fun. Yeah, We've yeah, already sure. got a few thousand in there. We're going to keep on going. All right, great. Great stuff. Now, Clay, let's keep going deep into these fundamentals that you think are really important for any golfer to improve. Yeah, and one that ties in that I kind of alluded to a little bit earlier would be what I call a straight line release. So again, studied major winners, the greatest players of all time, hundreds of hours just kind of going through and seeing what they did with their swings, dissecting the tiniest little pieces, and I realized they're doing all that different. Let's just get the things that are the same. So we talked about lag and how you want to have this good angle as you start your downswing. If you hit this angle, your power position, all that's going to happen. But where do I go from there? A lot of times people say, well, I don't know what the release is. I don't know when to release. I'm trying to hit the golf ball. I guess I'm supposed to release at the golf ball. Well, that's what I see a lot of players do is they'll stand up, flip the club like that. Not only does it kill your lag, it also kills your release. And that's just not what the pros are doing. If you take every single PGA Tour player at impact, they're going to have some shaft lean. So they're going to go ahead and have their body opening up. Their hips are opening up out of the way. Their hands are in front of the golf ball. And what I mean by shaft lean is, instead of the club being straight up and down, vertical like this, their hands are in front of the golf ball leading the way, which makes it a lot more stable, in my opinion, so that you can hit the divot in front and be consistent. But it also de-lofts the club, which gives you better smash factor, or in layman's terms, it just makes the ball go farther. Okay. A lot more solid. So yep. there's kind of a trick to that. And when I started to look at these major winners, these great players, I noticed that they were very consistent in how they were releasing the golf club. So every one of them, they had their, what I call their straight line release about 45 degrees in front. And let me tell you what I mean by that, because this is a little different than most people teach it. So if I grab the club kind of halfway up the shaft like this, in the downswing, when I have this lag, my club is gonna be pointing on this side of my forearms. Now, when I fully release it is when my club splits my forearms. So if you imagine a triangle, left arm, shoulders, right arm, whenever my club is on this side of that triangle, I haven't released yet. I'm on the way to releasing. Whenever it splits my forearms, then it's fully released, and then everything on this side of it is past the release. So when I looked at the major winners doing that, I noticed that on average, they release the club, or it very first split their forearms about 45 degrees in front. To be specific, it's a little closer to 40, 40.5, something like that, but this general area. And the crazy thing was, thousands of lessons, thousands of online lessons, tons and tons of players I've seen. I've never seen one player that wasn't a good player 
that had their release 45 degrees in front. Mm. So almost every single player that's a high handicapper, the release is at the golf ball or even behind the golf ball. Now, the last piece of that, the reason I call it the straight line release is because everything is going in that straight line. I like to imagine if my golf ball is here, if I was to turn and get this 45 degrees in front, you can see that's, that's pointing about roughly five, six feet in front of the golf ball, four feet, doesn't really matter to, if you're precise, they're all just releasing it in this zone. Now, when I'm there, we all hear about kinematic sequence. We hear about how important it is, but it's, it's pretty confusing. Really, the kinematic sequence comes down to go ahead and get in a good lag position, get your body opening up, and then from there, everything goes into a straight line toward that golf ball. Mm -hmm. So my hips, look at my belt buckles pointing toward that golf ball roughly. My shoulders are pointing toward that golf ball. My arms, my club, everything is pointing out in that direction. And if you look at 3D with a lot of players, you're gonna see that's kind of the point where it all matches up. Yeah. So if I can get lag, and I can release it as a straight line release, the ball just kind of gets in the way, and that's what all the good players are doing. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, are there any drills that we can do to help us yeah, change the golf swing? I got a crazy one for you, okay. if you want to do it. So if sure. you take a hammer, I actually don't recommend you want me people to do, it? do this one. Yeah, okay. it's a great demonstration. But I want you to feel like you're taking this hammer and you got some lag, yep. and then you're going to throw this hammer and try to knock that golf ball out as hard as you can. Because it's not, when we get lag, we're not trying to hold on to lag. Everybody's been told you got to hold it as long as you can. Yeah. I want you to feel like that, and I want you just to throw it at that. If you knock a hole in the wall, hey, I, I, that's okay. Right, because what we don't see is better players never release it. They're not finishing like this or, or you know, have the, the handle this way into the follow through. There's always some element of this pointing back at you. And I would even argue that, you know, a person's only going to lag it as much as they can release it typically. Yeah. So, so actually learning how to release it is part of even learning how to lag it. You're going to kind of always be working that problem backwards in your mind in some ways. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I like the idea. I don't want people to actually throw a hammer, you get hurt, you know, you get injured. But I like the idea of trying to throw something yeah. rather than holding on to it. So go ahead and let that thing fly. So I'm trying to throw it at that ball. You're going to try to knock that golf ball out if you can. Making just like a full swing or? Yeah, full back swing. We're going to commit 100% to it. Okay. There we go. Hit on the first try. All right. All right, so getting everything to release down in front. And then once you do that, again, I wouldn't do that for a person at home. That's just kind of an example of don't hold on to it. You're trying to let that thing go. So if you grab a club, I would come halfway in your downswing, get in that power position, or just kind of do a couple pump drills where you have a lot of lag. Yep. And I'm looking there to make sure that, again, the club's on the inside. We did the things we talked about. Mm -hmm. And then I would match that up with your hips, your shoulders, your arms, everything releasing to this ball out in front. And now you can see, perfect. So both those arms are extending. We don't have a chicken wing. We're not standing up out of our posture. This is what you're seeing with every single tour player. That's, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. So now, after you put those two things together, say for four or five swings, if you're at home doing those, then I would gradually just make that into a fuller and fuller swing and try to add some speed to it. Yeah, that's Got perfect it. there. I love that. Now go. the same thing. Again, if you're, if you're struggling with the slice, I'd try to get a little extra draw on it, but pair those two pieces together. There we go. Beautiful. So nice little baby draw on that one. Almost dead straight. And again, you just add a little bit more. Maybe if I felt like I still flipped it a little bit, yeah. then I would try to throw that ball a little farther in front, really even make it more of a reach or stretch to get there. Or if I didn't draw it enough, just try to do a little bit extra that we did on the power position where you really turn the face right. down. Right, and that, if, I, if I can turn the face down, like you were saying before, the face is open, you're only gonna lag it as much as you can square it up, right? Yeah. Because if I'm hitting it right, I'm just not gonna keep lagging it. So on that one, the face was a little bit open, so I probably need a little bit more of this turn down Absolutely. to square it up, and then from there, I might be inclined to, to lag it even more and, 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 and throw it and release it even farther that way. Yeah, and I found too, if you go ahead and release this golf, shot, golf ball again, like we were talking about, I like to look at the face here. If I'm struggling drawing it, I'm just gonna have these turn a little extra here, mm -hmm. the same as they did back there, and it just kind of pairs it up. So if you want a little extra draw on it, mm -hmm. go to the inside and let that thing fly. Okay. That didn't get much better than that. I wish yeah. I had that one every That felt pretty good. <laughs> All right, on the line. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, that was great. And I definitely felt a little bit more turned down, felt laggier through here, and then I really tried to get the release to be even more out in front that way with the face turned over a little bit. Awesome feel. We've talked about all these different fundamentals. Help us put this all together, and I think you got another fundamental that you think will, will really increase our power as well, our speed. Yeah, I mean, that's the fun part of golf, right? If we can hit it farther, that's great. A big part of that is what I call the power turn. So if I don't make much of a turn, I'm not gonna be able to hit it very far. And what I mean by this is, 
You've actually, a, a good friend of yours, Sasha McKenzie, has some great information on this. The only way I can swing this club at all is by putting forces into this handle, right? And if I don't move this handle very far, it's gonna be very difficult for me to accelerate this club a lot, right? So if I only take the club back to here, you know, quote unquote, compact swing, and I don't turn my shoulders very much, almost no way to hit this ball fast at all. So I'll even do one. I'll take one back to here. Notice how my shoulders won't turn at all. My hands don't go very far back. And I'm gonna feel like I hit the heck out of this thing. And we'll see what I can do. All right, so I'm going as hard as I can. I'm fairly fast. I generate almost 100 miles an hour club head speed. I did get it to roll about 115 yards, which helped a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so I got it yeah. a little over 200 yards. But the thing is, it's hard to hit it very far when you're doing that. And the easiest way to improve your distance, in my opinion, is to get your shoulders to turn more and to get your hand path longer. And when I do that, it doesn't matter if I'm 60 years old or 16 years old, you can generate a lot of speed, a lot more speed than you're normally doing. So one of my best tips with that, what I want people to do is I want them to generate a big shoulder turn early. And I found that that's, if you can do one thing that's gonna help you get more shoulder turn, this is it. I want a player to get their club across their shoulders like this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen up my legs and I'm gonna try to get my left shoulder or the butt end of this club sticking out from my shoulder behind that golf ball. Now, a lot of players have been told they wanna to stay really still with the feet. Heaven forbid you move the feet around a little bit like Jack Nicklaus, you know? And if you keep the feet still, if you're not very flexible, like I'm not very flexible, that's about as far as I can go. I wanna loosen up this left foot. I wanna loosen up this left knee and I'm gonna allow my legs to move a little bit there. You may even see my right leg start to straighten a little bit here. And that's gonna allow me to get that more turn. And I'm completely relaxed. I could sit here for 20 minutes with this much shoulder turn, right? That's a very comfortable position to be in. So I wanna get a player to get this, the butt in the club pointing behind the golf ball, let the lower body move a little bit. And then from there, I'm gonna stick my hands out like I was gonna hold a club here about waist high. So I'm getting that feeling that that's my backswing. I'm getting this huge shoulder turn halfway in my backswing. And what I found is that tricks people into getting a lot of turn early and a whole lot more shoulder turn without even really having to worry about it. The worst thing you can do, in my opinion, is to pick the club up with the hands and arms, let those arms bend, and all of a sudden I'm way back up here at the top of my swing and none of this has moved yet. So this is a little trick, a little hack, to get you to feel a big turn early in the backswing, then I would go ahead and complete it from there. Obviously on the follow through, I'm just gonna finish all the way around like that. And again, when I saw the major winners, that's exactly what they did. Every one of those players is getting over 90 degrees of shoulder turn, and the ones that aren't very flexible, maybe a little looser with the legs, hit it pretty hard. So I'm gonna get that same feeling here again, get my turn, get my arms out in front. Now from here, I'm gonna do a practice swing. I'm going to the top, and then I'm swinging all the way through to the finish. You don't have to feel like you kill it the first few times, get the motion down, and then I'm gonna ramp up the speed from there to get a little faster and faster. So once I get the feeling of this, then I'm just gonna take out the pauses, really get a good shoulder turn going back and through. And now I'm just gonna try to hammer it. A little hook there, try to go at it pretty fast. Yeah. But 121, so I would, Jeez, yeah. I would ramp it up like that until yeah. I get, you know, I like to see mine, you know, in the low 120s, and then I'll tone it down. So that's kind of pushing me to my max. I'm gonna tone it down a little bit and hit a normal shot which would be a lot straighter. A great speed. There you go, so it's pretty still straight. 120, right? Yeah, 120. Wow. Yeah, I felt like I just got a good turn, and that felt comfortable to me because I pushed it a little bit before with a bigger turn and got used to it. Part of what I love about the speed training is that first one, you just, like, there was no concern about where the ball is going. This is something I've seen with a lot of great golfers, is when they have, like, their speed training aspect um, of their practice, they're not worried about shot direction. They're not trying to hit good shots. They're just trying to swing it faster. And then once they hit that top speed, they're worried about more of you know, how they can, can control that speed on the golf course. That was exactly what you just did in that sequence. Yeah, it really frees you up. I, I want people to go ahead and hit it. And then when you feel like you find your max, then just back down a little bit. You're yeah. gonna get 90% of the gains that you had and you're gonna keep them, you know? Right, right, right. So just overcook it a little bit with the turn, settle down to something that feels a little bit more normal and it's gonna be pretty good with a lot of speed. Yeah, absolutely. Great. And this whole 20 minutes to, to power, you can find it. Yeah, that's on my, my website, topspeedgolf.com. If they go there, put in their email address, I'll introduce you to all five of the fundamentals. I know we only care, we really talked about three of them. I'll give you all five. 
give you some drills to get those down in your game and you know, start playing some great golf. Awesome stuff, Clay. Thanks so much for today. It's been great at your facility, Top Speed Golf Academy, the indoor filming studio in Orlando, Florida. Great stuff today, really appreciate it. Thanks, man. Awesome being here.